Alright guys, what's up? Today is Friday, January 21st. Tomorrow is the USA vs. Chile game. Uh, the friendly in Carson, California. Uh, Los Angeles, wherever. So yeah, tomorrow is the friendly. We've got a real young squad going out there. Going against a similarly young Chilean squad. First friendly of the year for the U.S. And January camps are always, you know, very young, MLS-heavy squads. And I think that's true this year. And I find it kind of funny how people are saying, oh, you know, finally, you know, Bob Bradley is taking the chance to try new young players out. And I'm, like, like they're new to this thing. Like, he's, this is what he does, you know. He usually gets young players in the January camp. He's experimented with young players in the past, like, for example, uh, Stuart Holden, uh, giving him a chance, um, uh, Benny Fellhaber, um, you know, I'm thinking about the Gold Cup, I mean, I mean, it's not like Bob Bradley is, is new to, you know, trying new players out. So, I'll just get right down to, uh, my team selections and, uh, what I hope to see from this match. My ideal formation, actually, would be a 4-2-3-1, and I say this because I think that um, at the top level, most most good teams use a 4-2-3-1, a employ a 4-2-3-1. I think it's the the formation of uh, you know the modern game right now, at this very moment. Um, 2014 could be completely different, I don't know, but I'd say over the past um, four years or so, the 4-2-3-1 has just been absolutely dominant. With that in mind, it would uh, my four at the back would be Anthony Wallace of FC Dallas, Tim Ream, New York Red Bulls, Omar Gonzalez of the LA Galaxy, and Marvel Wynn of the uh, Rapids. But I think that Marvel Wynn he offers a lot of pace. He's really one dimensional. I'm not sure he's the kind of right back that Bob Bradley wants. I, I, he definitely wants someone who can cross the balls in from that position because I think when you saw Jonathan Spector getting the crosses in from that area of the field in the Confederations Cup, uh, Clint Dempsey scoring those goals in the box. You know, that's that just seemed like it worked really well for the United States, you know, getting the crosses from the backs. Uh, you know, similarly, uh, uh, in the World Cup, you had Landon Donovan making a, a nice pass from that position of the field, you know, from like the halfway mark, where honestly a right back should be making that sort of pass. And then also um, the pass from uh, Steve Torundolo to... Um, release Landon Donovan down that right flank. So that's an area of the field that I think is very important for Bob Bradley's tactical plans. Um, Marvel Wynn might not really offer that, but um, you know, otherwise maybe Sean Franklin of the Galaxy. Um, I'm huge on Tim Ream, seeing him play every game last year. His, his composure on the ball is, is top notch. Sometimes he dwells on it a little bit too much, but yo, so I have to remember it was only his first year as a professional. All right, the midfield in the 4-2-3-1, Jeff Lorenowicz. You know, he's always been solid. The revolution losing him uh, really hurt them, and I think that you saw that him pairing Shelby Joseph in the midfield just showed how solid those two could be together. So I think that um, Jeff Lorenowicz, you know, now with uh, the Rapids, Jeff Lorenowicz aside Eric Alexander, um, I only say Eric Alexander because I think that he's probably the only other, uh, like, defensively minded midfielder that's uh, even in the roster. So with that in mind, my formation is not going to happen. So I'm just saying what, what I would do with what I have. My three in front, um, like a, a left winger, a right winger, and an attacking midfielder, or you know the three attacking midfielders. Um, down the left, I would have Breck Shea. I want to have faith in the kid. I want him to do well because I think that you know he's, he's so tall and height. Uh, makes a difference in the international game, I, I think. I, I know Spain might have disproved that, but, you know, um, tall tall wingers dominate the modern game. Like Ronaldo and uh, Riera, you know, to name two. Uh, he, he looked kind of crappy in the game against uh, Colombia. still want to have faith in the kid. I think that he can still improve. Um, so I'd, I'd stick him over there on the left. Uh, in the middle, I would have... Um, I prefer to have uh, Discarud in in the middle as an attacking playmaker, just because uh, I liked what I saw um, in his game against South Africa. I've watched uh, a couple of games that he's played for 
what's the name of the team? Stybeck or Stybeck. You know, I really like his positioning, uh, his his uh, soccer IQ as it is. I think is very high. Seeing him play in that South Africa game, you know, when he came on, I was like, well, you know, this kid looks like he could be, you know, that without putting too much pressure on him, I think he could be like the missing link between the midfield and the forwards that the United States really needs. And then out on the right, um, on the right, I probably have Alejandro Bedoya. Maybe he doesn't have the pace or the, you know, the experience to make it at the international level yet. Uh, I thought when he, I mean, he's played a couple games, you know, Brazil, this now he just looked gassed by the end of the game. You have to give him uh, some of these guys more time. Uh, it's, it has to be Bedoya. I think he's the only person that could play out there on the right. Um, I know a lot of people want Dax McCarty to start, and I, I'm pretty sure he will start. You know, he, he did well with the uh, in the youth ranks. What was it the U17 World Cup or whatever in Canada? Uh, he was, I think he was there. I, I know a lot of people are very high on Dax McCarty, but honestly, I think that Dax McCarty, he probably is what he is. I don't think he's going to prove that much more. So if you want to just, you know, capture the lightning on the bottle and use him now, go for it. I think that's why Wondolowski is there. Total crap. He had one good season, and then, so, you know, here he is. I think that Wondolowski is only good because of Bobby Convy, to be honest with everyone. And then up front, uh, Teal Bunbury and Juan Agudelo. I think that that's that. The two of them were the two strike partners at, with the Generation Adidas team that went 3-0 and undefeated in Spain. You know, people wanted to sign these two players, and I think that the MLS shut them down because they know that they have two young, good prospects and want them to grow a little bit more. We haven't seen much of Agudelo, and there is a lot of hope put on his shoulders, and, you know, I'm one of those that are have a lot of hope for these kids too because that would be great for Red Bulls if Agudelo did really well. That's why I want uh, Discrew to start from the beginning and not come on as a substitute for McCarthy because, honestly, Discarude, Agudelo, and Bombari, that play, when you look at it, is like, you know, they just they had good creativity and chemistry together, and that's something they can build off of, and I, I don't want them to, to stymie that and stifle it with Dax McCarty coming in, and they're trying something new, and I don't see Dax McCarty being the future of U.S. soccer, but I can see Discarude being the future of U.S. soccer, so let's, let's not fuck around and experiment with, you know, McCarty when I don't think he's going to be the future of the U.S. team, where these three could be. Yeah, like I said, I really hope I, that Bradley gives Descaru the start, and um, I, I don't want him giving Wondolowski a start. He's 27, he's not going to be a prominent feature in the 2014 World Cup, and that's what this this is all about. Agudelo, Bumbari, Descaru, that's the future, not McCarty and Wondolowski. Those guys can stay on the bench, and they could come on as substitutes if nothing's happening. That's that's the way I feel about it. So, did I, did I say my goalkeeper? Uh, my goalkeeper would be Nick Romando, just because I think he gives you the best chance of winning. You want a solid defense. Reem, Gonzalez, they'll be solid enough. Um, and then Romando, you know how good he is. Yeah, that's it. My prediction is 2-2. Uh, uh, I think that the inexperience between both of these squads will make for a shaky defense uh, on both ends. And I think that if Chile were to shut out the U.S. tomorrow, then we got a problem. I think that Agudelo and Bombardier should at least get one goal between the two of them. Hopefully we score. That's it. I'm going on a little bit too much. So there it is. Let's go. USA. USA. Peace. Jacket and a pen. Um, right.